there's a lot of stuff around around here in this apartment. Take a look at this picture. A framed reproduction of Clifford's portrait of General jo General Charles George Chinese Gordon, 1833 to 1885, the hero of the Chinese War of 1860. He was killed by Mahdi's forces in the Battle of Khartoum. Let's see. Look at the bookcase. Watson's medical shelf, which also contains his case books, notebooks, and scrapbooks. A few pulp mysteries and a collection of Clark Russell's sea stories. Bearskin hearth rug. Supplied unwittingly by an, by an enormous European brown bear. Its close proximity to an almost constantly burning coal fire has rendered this once lustrous coat a bit dingy and fire scarred. Get the chair. A typical sitting sitting room chair. The sheen of its wine-red velveteen covering shows that it is well used. A dark purple silk dressing gown with a rolled collar is carelessly crumpled on the seat, and the anti-macassar -mac -mac requires changing. I should also warn you that there a lot of this is vocabulary that I haven't seen or read in some years. I haven't played this game in over five years. In addition to that, I'm not well versed in uh, English idiosyncrasies. This, this game was published in, this, this game was created by a European company and then only brought over to the United States by EA. I should warn you that as an American, I will not be speaking with English accents. I can do my best to f imitate them, but it's not going to sound very good. Made of carved mahogany, this bookcase holds reference works, maps, gazetteer, and encyclopedia, toxicology, soil analyses, and chemistry texts, a collection of spe a specialist monographs, and selected historical classics. Alright, I'm sick of looking, looking around stuff. Let's just open the door and walk out. We already got the note. Come along, Watson. The game's afoot. Quite so, Holmes. And the slow walking continues. So outside of 221 Baker Street, 221B Baker Street, I should say, for all you Sherlock Holmes purists out there, we see a couple of people standing outside the building. This boy is named Wiggins. Let's see. Are the rest of your lads available, Wiggins? They are, sir. Tell me what you need and I'll pass it on. There's eight who's willing to work, and it'll cost eight bob a day plus the usual reward. I will be requesting your assistance, Wiggins. At your service, Mr. Holmes. You got a job for the Irregulars? Well, no, Wiggins. Not just at the moment. Very good, sir. Let me know when there's anything we can do for you. We can all use the brass. And there's Jonas, the newsstand operator. Oh, look, the Ripper strikes again. My compliments, Mr. Rigby. The day finds you well, I trust. Indeed, Mr. Holmes. Business has been brisk. The great British public devours anything to do with the Ripper. While Jack's at work, my family's eating steak and kidney pud. Doesn't look like there's much else we can talk to him about. Let's see if Watson has anything to contribute to this conversation. A challenging case, is it not, Watson? Quite so, to tangle my senses, Holmes. I hardly know which way to turn. These hideous ripper crimes have exhausted the resources and imagination of Scotland Yard, Watson. Can we do better with our case? With you in the lead, Holmes, I'm sure we shall. So you can exit out on either side of the screen, both of which will lead us to this map screen. 
So this is Greater London. And this is going to be the, the way that we're going to be traveling between different locations. So the only other location that we've got, aside from where we currently are at, at 221B Baker Street, is the alley in which Lestrade has graciously invited us to take a look at the body. So we're going to head over there right now. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, very good of you to come here and come so quickly. After you thoroughly examine the scene and the corpus delecti, please share your observations with me. Now, yeah, I know Lestrade is more serious than that, but I sort of portray him as a bumbling idiot because, well, basically he gets everything wrong in this story. A woman approximately 25 years old has had her jugular vein viciously slashed. This was certainly the cause of death. There are several non-fatal gashes on her abdomen, abrasions on the back of her finger, and scratches on her left ring finger. The distinct odor of a particularly cloying and inexpensive brand of perfume pervades the body. So, aside from the corpse, now we can look at... Oh look, there's the cat! Whee! Look, he's running across the... Oh, we can't select him. Anyway. So aside from the corpse, we can now look at the scratches, abrasions, and the knife wounds that were pointed out by looking at the body the first time. Let's look at the scratches. A slight skin discoloration encircles the ring finger of her left hand suggests that the victim wore a ring. The scratches result from said ring being wrenched from her hand by the murderer. Hmm. Abrasions? The abrasions, the abrasions on her neck imply that her attacker forcibly removed some sort of heavy chain or necklace. There are three separate lines where the chain scraped her neck, all of which are deep, all of which are deep and vivid. Mm, let's see here. Knife wounds. The wounds were clearly made with a short blade, perhaps the size and shape of a scalpel. Closer, close observation reveals that the blade was serrated. There is a trace of white powdery residue of unknown nature on the victim's coat immediately beside what appears to be the first of the abdominal wounds. Sorry. White powdery residue. The substance was probably on the murder weapon at the time of the attack. A thorough chemical analysis would like would most likely reveal its composition. Hmm. Let's see what else we can look at here. It is a silk it's a simple silk laden handbag, sometimes called a retic reticule. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, I've never heard that term before. The contents a pocket mirror, a tin focal a tin of facial powder a large metal key, a kerchief, probably handkerchief, and some caches, have been dumped out and apparently subjected to a hasty search. See the hat? A lady's very stylish hat, fashioned in fine crimson silk. An iron bar. This is a two-foot section of iron pipe. Both ends are corroded by rust. There is a trace of red paint on the end. Hmm. Okay, what about these barrels? Do they say anything to us? This is a storage area for damaged and discarded stage props from this, this season's plays. These items are waiting for the dustman. The entire area appears undisturbed. It doesn't look like there was anything there. What's this battered piece of paper? It appears to be a common theater playbill. What's this? The crate. Remember the intro? He hid behind the crate. This is a well-traveled but sturdy crate with a detachable cover. The name of the theater, stenciled on the cover, is almost worn away. Footprints in the dirt nearby indicate someone standing here recently. Oh, aside from Holmes? 